March 13th, 2020. The day now burned into our minds as the end of our old lives and the beginning of the strange new ones we have reluctantly grown so accustomed to. It was a day defined by our uncertainty. For weeks, people have been talking about something called the coronavirus, speculating over what might happen next and how it might affect our lives. I know we all have our own personal stories our brains instantly click to at the mention of this terribly unlucky Friday the 13th. And while different, they're all somehow the same. I remember coming into school that day with a small bottle of hand sanitizer and a box of tissues out of fear of what had started to happen in the world and slightly paranoid that the spring cold I then had was more than that. Ridiculous, I know, but valid at the time following the cancellation of all after school activities and the hoarding of, for some reason that we still puzzle over, toilet paper. I remember eating in the cafeteria for what I wondered might be the last time as I read the news on my phone anxiously and stared around the large room. I remember leaving for school at the end of the day with no confirmed closing yet and the last step I took as I got on the bus that would take me home and away from school for the next eight months to come. As cliche as our stories may seem at this point where everything that was new then is now commonplace we all treat them as significant and representative of the struggles we have faced in one of the most difficult years and one that will live in infamy forever, 2020. I know, 10 months all of us consider a complete waste of time and one that we have found no benefit from at all. And I agree with all these things, except for the latter, and perhaps you will too. Raise your hand if you believe that, well, that nothing good has come from 2020 and that it should be forgotten and put behind us now. Raise your hand if you believe that while it has not been a very happy year, that you have gained a new perspective from it about both yourself and others. My name is Caitlin, and while positivity has never quite been my thing, the subject of sacrifice and empathy's place in human nature have always been of interest to me, as well as the actions people are willing to take for one another. In every unfathomable challenge we've had to face, I believe that there's something to be grateful for from 2020. It has reminded us of something that perhaps some of us don't realize the significance of, something essential to our existence, which I'll get to in a moment. As for the handling of the pandemic, some say masks are what have and will continue to get us through this. Some say social distancing or an effective vaccine are. Others say us caring for one another alone is enough. Now maybe you realize it and maybe you don't, but each of the first three subjects in those statements are all the results of the subject that I bring up in my next point of discussion, human compassion. What I want to talk to you about is its apparent simplicity along with its fascinating complexity. In the current state of the COVID-19 pandemic, 3.7 million people have passed away from the virus worldwide. When we hear that number, to some of us, it feels simply like that, a number, before the realization sinks in. It almost becomes too much for our minds to grasp, to realize that over 3 million people, just like us, have lost their lives that were full of just as much opportunity as ours appear to be. They have plans, hopes, and dreams, just like all of us do. None of this was ever meant to happen, and it still isn't over. Millions of people, all innocent, have lost everything from a once in 100 years pandemic that none of us predicted. Now that we have broken down the truth behind that number, it starts to sink in with all of us the pain and suffering that all these people and their families have had to go through. We start to genuinely care. We start to feel sympathy and eventually empathy as we delve into the perspectives of the people who have lost something, someone, or everything, all of which are part of human nature. We all have this incredible ability to immerse ourselves into any situation and discover the struggles people in that situation are constantly forced to face. This is how we care. And what we have learned is that this level, level of compassion is necessary, not just in the time of worldwide crisis, but in the everyday lives that we will return to one day. It is necessary in even the most brief or seemingly insignificant of scenarios and the acts of kindness that stem from it. It is the most essential trait of our humanity. 
Now, compassion is a simple subject, defined as the caring for others who are faced with situations that we are not directly affected by. But it's also one of the hardest qualities to maintain for us. It's funny, isn't it, how the trait so closely entwined with our human nature sometimes feels anything but natural. And there might be a reason for that. Perhaps compassion teaches us about something more than just caring for others. Maybe, in the times that it tests us, and the times that we feel like failing those tests, it teaches us another perfectly human quality, imperfection. 2020 was certainly a learning experience for all of us about ourselves. We learned about our faults and any subconscious biases. We learned how flexible we are to change, contradictory to the idea before that we were rigid to it. Most of all, what we were willing, we learned what we were willing to sacrifice for each other. We were given the opportunity to write a story of unity, like the ones we had always been told about in difficult times, but one that was uniquely our own, and one that we continued to add chapters to, each of us contributing in our own way through our actions each day. So embrace your imperfections and embrace your humanity. Thank you.